Okay, I've almost got all my elements adjusted. And I have more than five, which makes life a little hard, but I hope it's all worth it. So now I've got this nice colorful rock formation, but I definitely need to brighten that up to make it work with the foreground I've already established. And I'm even going to uh, push its contrast a little bit stronger. So this is just the classic kind of brightness contrast. In the foreground, you can get away with the most extreme contrast. You still don't want to go to solid black or solid white, but you can really push things to the edge of their histogram. And then I can go ahead and play with color balance and push it more into the, the reds and magentas with the weird greens and the highlights that I think are necessary, the blues. Because I need this to stand out. Then the shadows. Push and pull it. All right, so that made a big difference. Right. Not so yellow and bland, now more contrasted. Now I can go in. And I can be aggressive about cutting it out. Just with my 100% soft edged eraser. Maybe not quite so soft edge now, like a 30% hardness, because I'm in the foreground now. And these rocks are not soft. And I can even create my own rock edge if I need to. Like that. Now, when you're doing it by hand like this, you're bound to miss little sections, and that's okay. We're not getting paid thousands of dollars by a movie studio to deliver this digital background on top of their green screen. If we were getting paid a ton for it, we'd have more than a, a few days to work on it. Or we'd have more people. <laughs> so we're doing the best we can. But we are getting introduced to the skills and then practicing them. And they will get easier with practice. All right, so I've got a bit of an issue with this eraser. I realize I need to cover up that seam with those rocks. So I'm not going to go all the way to the edge there. Instead, I'm going to burn that down. Remember, dodging and burning is always an option we have. Okay. So now I've got this kind of volcanic, volcanic rock that's going between those layers. First of all, I can sharpen that a little bit, help it fit nicely into the scene, like so. But maybe more importantly, I can use dodge and burn on my rainbow rocks here to help that sit more believably, even though I just created all those edges out of nothing. So. First, let's burn shadows. I'm going to do it to the midtones. And I'm going to really put some distance between these different stratas of this rock. Just burning down those midtones, right? Whoops. Everywhere I think it needs shadows.
And then the opposite, I'm going to use dodge on the midtones and hit some of the highlights so that I can push this rock behind these. Okay. My tools are lagging a little bit, so I'm just going to do a quick uh, save. And a quick cleanup of this erase of my jewels and erase that edge. Come on, keep up with me. There we go. So now, messing with this rock. I want this to all be about texture. So I'm going to take the contrast on both sides. And I will brighten it up. Now I go to color balance. and get it working better with kind of what I've set set forward here. And this is one where I just have to play with it because I want it to be different than the other rocks, but also be believable in this landscape. I just have to play with the sliders in both directions for the midtones first and then the highlights and shadows. Right. So now if I want to go a little crazier, I can go to image adjustment hue saturation and I can push the saturation up or I can push it down because I feel like I have a lot of colorful stuff. And so maybe I want to take that saturation down a little bit. I can even just change the whole um, kind of spectrum of the color. So I can make it more of a purple color. But the problem is that I'll lose some of the, the variety that's already in it. It's the problem when you have control of every aspect of every pixel. It's hard to know what's too much. So I always do Command Z, and it seems like for a pretty subtle change, <laughs> it's still helpful. Okay, now I'm going to dodge and burn this, and it's my last element. But I definitely need to burn it at the midtones, you know, as it is going behind this other rock structure. And you see, as I'm burning it, it's making it more saturated in certain areas and that gives me some nice variety and it's all about I want strong rock texture here and this is a good example I'm really just creating the lighting. What I want to see. So now I'm going to take just a selection of this back edge. It's very loose. And instead of just Gaussian blurring it directly like I did with the back mountains, I'm going to duplicate it. Command J. So I have that edge floating on top like that. And then I'm going to Gaussian Blur it. Always where you can control it. Otherwise, it will just remember your last settings. So if I zoom in, I can see what that blur does. It's going to help me clean it up. <coughs> it's subtle, but it's helpful. Now I take my eraser. I'm going to merge these two layers together. Command E. Take my 100%, just barely soft-edged eraser. And cut down that, that little bit on there. The other option I have 
though I think it would soften it a little too much, is to do the refine and mask. Select the empty space behind it and then do refine and mask. To select and soften it. And one of the big ways that a composite artist work to make something believable is they leave a lot of imperfection in there, a lot of variety. If you try to clean up and make everything perfect, it stands out just as, ba just as badly as if it was really poorly done. Okay, so last little touch, I can do some internal compositing, which means that I like everything except I feel like this just feels a little un underserved. So I'm going to take a little bit of another layer that I have, like say this stuff, some of which is already cropped out, right? And duplicate it, move it up above. I'll turn my, my mask window on again and move it where I want it. Oh, wrong layer. <laughs> I want what I copied from it. There it is. Turn off auto select so I move the right thing. Yeah, because I just need a little. So now I'm going to rotate it. I might even flip it horizontal, right? Like your cartoon jumble skills of transforming. Make it its own thing, right? Stretch it, not too much. Maybe even uh, just warp it enough just to curve it around with these rocks. And then I can erase it out and leave some of that. So first, I'm going to do it with a large lower opacity to kind of blend it in. Oh, my computer's slowing down on me. Good time to save. But that way I can get some of these jewel tones and some of these colors into some other aspects just to bring everything together. I think a faster way to do this once my computer catches up is to select the empty space around my rock here. Select the inverse and then just cut it out. So I already have it blending in. Oops, wrong layer and then kind of aggressively take it down. I can also try blending modes. Uh, pin light and soft light work really well. for kind of blending colors into textures. Try pin light. Pretty interesting. And then soft light. Yeah, so let's do soft light at a slightly lower opacity. And then just keep blending it with the eraser. So I'm getting these kind of unearthly glows and jewel tones to these desert rocks. That's what I'm after. I'm going to take my opacity down more in my eraser as I blend it in more. 